Good morning. We're now on the record. My name is Bryce Connor, your videographer. I represent First Legal Depositions, located at 333 South Grand Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90071. Today is February 24, 2022. The time is 9.36 a.m. Central. This is the start of the videotaped deposition of David Tyler Moss in the matter of David Tyler Moss et al. v. Marco Princip et al. in the U.S. District Court, 68th Judicial District of Dallas County, Texas, number DC 2009893, taking place via Zoom web conferencing where the deponent, counsel, and the court reporter all attend remotely from separate locations and separate internet connections. This deposition is being taken on behalf of the defendant. Would counsel present please identify themselves for the record beginning with the questioning attorney. Dean DuBose representing defendant Holly Bose. Craig Capua representing plaintiff slash and judgment creditor David Tyler Moss. Our court reporter today is Caroline Massa, also from First Legal Depositions, who will now swear in the witness. Mr. Moss, if I can get you to raise your right hand, please. I'll place you under oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give here today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. And <clears throat> counsel, do you have... Uh, any agreements for the record today or just Texas rules? We're under the rules. The Texas rules of civil procedure are good with me. Thank you. And Bryce, you misspoke a little. This is not in a federal court. It's, it's in a state court. I'm um, sorry, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Moss, my name is Gene DuBose, and I'm representing defendant Holly Bone in this lawsuit. Um, would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, David Tyler Moss. Uh, have you ever given a deposition before? Uh, yes, a couple of years ago <clears throat> in this case. When it was in the uh, federal court? Uh, uh think so. I'm not 100% sure which one. Of, that was a while back ago, actually. Okay. Um, well, uh, the ground rules, well, the one important rule, which I think you're aware of, I've read some of your testimony uh, before where you were pretty nervous. Are you nervous today? No. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, the um, is we don't simultaneously talk. Um, because uh, uh, Ms. Massa uh, cannot take down uh, the two of us talking at once. Yeah. Um, so the second thing is, um, if, you, if I ask a question that you don't understand, then I'll ask you to tell me that you don't understand so I can clarify my question. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, another thing is that uh, you are in control of this deposition in the sense that if you want a cup of coffee, if you want to go to the bathroom, uh, if you want to talk to Mr. Capua, uh, you can say, right, and we will, we will take a break uh, until you take care of whatever it is that you uh, want to take care of. So, uh, how old are you now? I'm 29. 29? Yes. Okay. And um, what are you doing now to earn a living? Uh, still on YouTube. <clears throat> Not currently making videos myself, but just from my back catalog of videos, they're still, they still make money. Okay. And uh, do and you I have do, a... Sorry, I do social okay. media stuff too, Instagram accounts and all, all, a lot of different stuff. Um, do you have any income from the social media accounts? Uh, a little bit here and there. 
Okay. So uh, you have a channel, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And well, I have two YouTube channels. Two YouTube well, actually, channels. Actually, sorry, I have more than that, but two that I've actively been on over the years. Okay. And are you posting exclusively your videos on those channels? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, and sorry, I, I completely forgot the video games channel, which this is all about, too. I guess that would be my YouTube channel also. <laughs> Um, what kind of a channel is that? The video games. Uh, it's a. <clears throat> it started as a collab channel, a video okay. gaming channel. Oh, I I, I think used the word there. Collab was that? Well, that's I, kind of the term that that back in the day when there was YouTube channels that were like that. There's not really that. I don't know of any YouTube channels that are like that now, but it was pretty much just. A YouTube channel where anyone, not anyone could upload, but a person could get licenses to upload somebody else's video. Okay. So, um, which was Marco at the time or Brian. Yes. So, you, um, the, the videos that you upload, uh, what are they videos of? Uh, um, I've got two personal YouTube channels. One of them is like a tech YouTube channel. So like reviewing iPhones, uh, how to's tech news. And then I've got a vlog channel traveling skate, just my daily life, just traveling, skateboarding, stuff like that. Okay. So these are all videos of you. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, Did you ever do any animation? No. Okay. Well, I mean, when I was really young, just playing around with it, but not like as a YouTube channel. Okay. No. <clears throat> what, what do you understand about the process of making a video? Uh, excuse me, an animation video. Uh, I mean, I can't say that I could do it myself, but just from doing years of video work and knowing how, I mean, being a tech savvy person, I guess, I, like if I wanted to go make animations right now, I could teach myself how to do it. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's not something I couldn't learn to do, I guess. Mm -hmm. When you say it's a lot of work, oh, what do you mean by a lot of work? I'm just creating animations. You have to have, you have to be good in graphic design, uh, know how to edit, know how to put all the pieces together to make an animation. And um, have, have you ever uh, talked to somebody who uh, does a lot of animation? Mm -hmm. Ryan Martin, yes. Oh, and, and you, you you think he does a lot of animation? Yeah, it's I've known him to do animations for a long time. So, um, how is it that you know that he does animations? Uh, from years of dealing with him and talking to him, working with the video game channel in the beginning, like even back before video games ever started. I just knew him from being around on YouTube, being a video creator. Well, again, I want to I want to know, uh, understand how it is that you know he was a video creator. Uh, he was online posting. You, his voice, his own videos. Uh, he's, I mean, he's been in videos himself with his face, saying he's an animator and a video creator. Um, a, a video with his face would not be animation, would it? No, that wouldn't. Um, you're, when you ask about being a video creator, that's how I know he's a video creator because I've seen his face, I know his voice, and I've seen him talk about doing the animations. 
Well, uh, the fact that his voice is on a video, does that mean he created the video? He for sure created a part of it. Well, the, vo the vocal part, right? I mean, you'd have to, to do it, as far as animations, to do vocal work over it, you would have to be working with the video to even, because if it's a character talking, you have to make sure your voiceover is going with the animation. So you'd have to, it's not like just me talking to the camera right now where my voice is automatically gonna sync up. You'd have to work with the video to get the audio to sync up with the characters moving their mouths. Yeah, <clears throat> well, uh, do you ever go see animated movies? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which ones have you seen? Just that, that you really like? Uh, the first one that came to my head, just because as a kid, is my favorite movie is Aladdin, I guess. <laughs> I don't okay. remember the last time I watched an anim animated okay. movie. And, and there was Robin Williams in that movie. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Totally bananas. Absolutely pure Robin Williams. Well, yeah. How do you think they got, just, just think about it. How do you think they got the faces in the animation to match up with the words that were said? Oh, a lot of probably takes of audio and matching it up with the video. <clears throat> well, actually, vi uh, the audio is done first. Because it's the only way you yeah. can do that. You can't well, really do it again and again. Uh, you can but, do the, no, they're doing the audio several times, but yeah, they're, they're, yeah, you, you, they you, audio yeah, 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 if you have a character <clears throat> on the audio, on the, on the screen where you can see the face, uh, then it makes sense that you have to have that audio so that you can get the right shapes on the lips and everything like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, you remember that it was Robin Williams' voice in Aladdin, right? Sorry, just I'll, uh, this, I didn't mean to like cut you off or oh, no, go ahead. That question, but <clears throat> I know from even doing animations, like I said, when I was a kid, just playing around, and I'm, I would assume it's way better now, but now you can even literally create an animation and just with how far technology is now, like, you can that you don't even have to match it up sometimes with audio like they can you can just throw audio into an animation and it'll pretty much make it look like those characters are going along with the voice <clears throat> just as if you see like where they make president trump look like he's saying something and he didn't say it but yeah that's, i just want to make that point sorry what was your previous question well um you uh do, do you understand that that sort of capacity that you've spoken of um, existed at the time that Aladdin was made? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Okay, you just talked about <laughs> developments in uh, technology that allowed the, uh, uh, okay. the technology to mimic the face. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? It's the tech is definitely back then when Aladdin came out is definitely not like what it is now for sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, but you, you recognized Robin Williams' voice. Yes. Correct. Did you conclude from that that Robin Williams owned? that movie no and why not mm, because that's a movie and it's there's tons of people working on a big production like that so uh but the fact that a voice uh do uh, it, you certainly watch videos on youtube that had different voices. You, know, you can definitely distinguish one voice from another. You have, haven't you not? Yes. Okay. Um, which one of those two voices owns the video? 
with a YouTube objection to form. Uh, you can answer if what, you know. Wait, what, what? I'm sorry, Craig. I didn't hear what you just said. Well, I said you can answer if you know the answer to the question. Can you repeat the question one more time? Sorry. Um, I believe the question was. Uh, um, we could, could you read that back to me? Me? Uh, no, sorry. Carolyn. Sorry. Question. Okay, which one of those two voices owns the video? Okay, that's what I thought. That's that's the question. So on YouTube, I would say it's a lot different because it's typically a small production. Like as a YouTuber, generally you're like a creator working. You're like the director, the producer, the editor the script writer, generally YouTube channels are a smaller production. So I would say comparing a movie to a YouTube video is a lot different. Well, you said that, um, and I, I, you have said that you <clears throat> inferred that Mr. Martin owned um, these videos because his voice was in it. Is that not your testimony? Mm, I wasn't saying that. Well, uh, well then, uh, I, I heard you, I saw, you know, I asked what the reasons were that you believed that Mr. Martin was an animator. And as I recollect your answer, it was that you'd heard his voice on videos. Is that not what you testified to? Yes. And I the form. You can answer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, and from seeing him post like on Twitter, YouTube, like literally claiming to be an animator and futuristic hub. So. Not just, sorry, not just because he's has voices on it. Okay. Because uh, even if it's a small production and there are two voices, uh, there's no way you could tell which one is the creator based on voice in, in the video. Isn't that correct? Not for sure, no, but at the same time, and they're working on it. So they, they, they are kind of the creator, even though they may have not done all parts of the video. They're working on a part of the video. So, so uh, Robin Williams was one of the creators of the movie. Is that correct? I would. Direction of form. Pardon? I didn't hear your answer. When it, sorry, when he says objection of form, does that mean I'd still answer, Greg? You, yes. Yeah, you can answer the question after I object, unless I tell you otherwise. Okay, all right. Uh, he was one of the creators of the movie. Yeah, he took a part in it. He voice acted in it. Um, that's absolutely correct. The much creative energy that goes into a big movie. There's a lot of creative energy that goes into creating an animated video on YouTube. Isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, actually, the voice is a pretty small part of that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a small part. I mean, if you didn't have the voice, you'd just be watching an animation with no dialogue around it. Did, um, did you read my client's declaration filed in this suit where she talked about the things she did in animating and the amount of time that was spent on each one of those tasks? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, do you remember what, what amount of time she allocated to getting the sound? Uh, I don't remember her mentioning that. Uh, I think she did. I think she said it was an hour or two in uh, a process that at least took 60 or 70 hours. Um, does that sound about right to you? I'm not sure. 
Okay. Um, so, but, but, so the most reliable evidence you have as to Mr. Martin being an animator is because he's said he animated. Peter, uh, isn't that correct? It's not just that, like all the people I've interacted with also know that he was an animator and on Futuristic Hub. It's like uh, and, and, and what, interactions with him in, in open court. It's just, it's, I just know that he's the animator of Futuristic Hub. It's, it's pretty obvious when he's been doing videos for years. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is the, uh, is that the, the most important reason that you've heard that you've concluded that Mr. Martin is the animator or because he said he was the animator and because other people have told you that. Is that correct? Direction of form. Yes. yes. And, and what other people have told you that? Uh, I mean, he's told me himself. I'm pretty sure Marco, another guy in the uh, original lawsuit, uh, I'm pretty sure he's mentioned it and it's, it's just as, like the YouTube community. It's n known as him running that YouTube channel because I know a lot of YouTube creators and he's been around YouTube for a long time. <laughs> well, um, do you know what a manager of a channel is? Yes. <clears throat> and what is a manager of a channel? I mean, it could be different levels of involvement. It could be anywhere from running the channel completely to managing sponsorships and only that. I mean, there's people that manage YouTube channels that don't even help in the content or anything. They help mainly just in SEO and like making sure the video performs well uh, and with the YouTube algorithm. There's, there's so many different types of YouTube manager. But isn't it the, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, what, what I understand is, is that the manager is somebody who takes other people's creations and helps them to promote it, um, gives them guidance, as you say, on SEO and things. It, does that, is that sort of the way you understand the term manager in the YouTube world? Well, that's, that's what I mean. Like, it just depends on the situation. Because every YouTube channel is going to have a different relationship with their manager if they have one. Um, have you ever heard some, well, do, uh, do you know some managers? Uh, I, yeah, I've known a lot of people that have managed YouTube channels. I mean, even Brandon Keating, who's my partner in this, I mean, I guess I would call him a manager at one point in time because, but he wasn't managing individual YouTube channels that I know of. It was more like how we've talked about this before, but MCNs, like you could consider an MCN a manager of a channel because they're managing all the ads that run on your YouTube channel. And the, the N, MCN is, uh, and would you tell me what you mean by the term MCN. Uh, Multi-channel network. Okay. It's evolved that... over the years for YouTube, but that's pretty much instead of all of your advertisements running through Google, it's like you sign a deal with a multi-channel network. They're your manager and they handle all your ads. If you have any issues with YouTube, like videos getting taken down, copyright strikes, they can 
generally help you out with that kind of stuff. Okay. And, and um, do you know how MCNs get paid? Through Google AdSense. Instead of Google AdSense running through your YouTube channel, they, you, your, their Google ads are going to run on your channel. Okay. And AdSense is the, I don't know what to call it. Um, it's, it's a program. Beg pardon? It's the advertising platform that Google uses. But it's, it's also, it has a, um, a, a payment function in it, does it not? Uh, are you saying to pay out creators or? Yes. Deeper? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you can, um, can any individual who uh, has a channel get an AdSense account? You, you can make an AdSense account, but that doesn't mean on YouTube necessarily that you can use your Google ads on there. You have to have, you have to meet certain thresholds before you can uh, run ads on your YouTube videos. And that's changed off and on over the years before when it began, it was hard to be a YouTube partner. Then they let everybody do it. <laughs> then there's a, they call the ad apocalypse where a bunch of advertisers are backed out. And then now they've, re-added the thresholds and you have to hit a certain amount of watch time on your videos and certain amount of subscribers before you can run ads on them now. Okay. So you mentioned the term, um, a, a YouTube partner. And I think what you said, tell me what the definition of a YouTube partner is. Okay. I see it now. I don't know if they even are, Refer to it really as a YouTube partner. It's but the YouTube. Well, the well, YouTube. Let, 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 me, let me clarify a little bit. Um, in order to, uh, well, I'm going to use the word monetize mm -hmm. on a channel. Um, what does the term monetizing the channel mean to you in YouTube? That means YouTube is allowing you to run ads on the YouTube channel. Okay. And they only, uh, they have criteria for letting somebody become a YouTube partner. Is that correct? Yes. And those criteria have changed from time to time. Yeah. Um, but once you are a partner and have an AdSense account, uh, my understanding is that whatever, well, okay. Um, how, do you know how Google determines the amount of money that should be put into the AdSense account uh, on a channel. Yes, they have a, it's called a publisher ID. It's like a unique code for your adver or AdSense account. And when you connect your AdSense account and your YouTube channel, that's how Google tracks all those ads. And you can see by video, by minute, by hour, what each video and what your channel uh, is making in revenue. And, um, and, and, and then, um, you know, the advertiser may be running many, many ads on many, many different channels. Isn't that right? Yes. So does, is it your understanding that Google has a method of figuring out how much of that ad revenue is attributable to a specific channel or a specific video. Yeah, through the publisher ID, that's that they're tracking just like they do with any ads. They're tracking you. They know how many people have looked at the ad. They know it's connected to your AdSense account, and 
the ads are switching in and out all the time and they try to make it related to the video, but it's not always related to the video. Okay. So yeah. then the, the, um, Google is able to precisely figure out um, how many people are watching the advertisement on a video, for example, on a channel. Is that correct? Is that your understanding? Yes, and they you can go into your YouTube analytics and it's very detailed showing you how much you're making and they give you a CPM and RPM, which is like the average it's per thousand views that you get. It shows how much you're in, which, like I said, there's different ads switching in and out all the time. So that CPM and RPM is going to always be changing, but that's how much you're making per thousand views you get on a video. So uh, it's <laughs> CPM as in Mary. Yes. Um, and uh, what what does that mean cpm it's cost per million but as like roman numer in roman numerals it's a thousand okay so uh and uh, the rpm what is that uh that's the rpm this that's actually a little bit newer it used to be only called cpm but the RPM is like actually what you're making per thousand views. CPM now is more like, it's, how do I describe this? So it's like, say you get a thousand views on a video, but every one of those views may not be running an ad and your RPM is like actually the number you're making on videos that are running ads at that time. It's so basically just like an, to give you an average to show you how much you make per thousand views. Okay. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is that whatever the amount of income is attributable to a video, Google takes a fairly sizable cut of that before sending out uh, the revenue to the um, uh, channel, through the channel, to the owner of the video. Is that correct? Yes. Um, do you know how much, what percentage? I'm pretty sure it's 65, 35, or maybe it's 45, 55. Okay. And what, what, I've, what I've heard it was only from uh, the fellow who was uh, running uh, was the MCN for Holly's channel. And he said it was 45% would go to Google and then the 55% was sent yeah, out I, I think to it's the MCN. 45. Sorry, yeah. I, think, yeah, I think it is 45, 55. So, you know. And when that money gets to the MCN, uh, it's my understanding that the MCN will take a, a small portion of that um, for its services and then send the rest on uh, to uh, whoever owns the video. Is that correct? Not necessarily because, I mean, I've known people that don't give any percentage of their channel that are signed to an M MCN or have been. Oh, uh, sometimes it, you're generally giving a percentage of your revenue away, but yeah. that, that's not always the case. Yeah, I, so I would consider that uh, uh, with the amounts of money on YouTube, it'd be unusual if somebody was assisting in making that money and not getting a piece of it. It's, well, there's other forms of making revenue other than just Google AdSense running on your channel. like. For instance, like my dad, he's signed a hundred percent deal with the networks where they, 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 I mean, if they're selling sponsorships and stuff like that, they can take a cut of that revenue. They don't have to, like a lot of MCNs over the years, sometimes would give a hundred percent deal to literally just have a big channel under their network. Oh, okay. If the big creators with them, then other creators are going to want to sign with them and may give a percentage away. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> so, but um, so I, I just want to recapitulate. My understanding is that you rely on three things to conclude that Mr. Martin is the animator for the videos that were on Futuristic Hub. And those three elements are one, he said he was. Two, other people have said that to you and that he was a, a, an animator. And three, that his voice is in the video. Mm, are, sure. those, are, are those the only sources of your information um, which leads you to conclude that Mr. Martin is the animator on Futuristic Hub? So back when we were in federal court, I mean, he admitted it on the stand. He was involved in the video games YouTube channel. That's how this whole thing started. And I mean, on the video games YouTube channel, which he was working on, he was promoting, go subscribe to my channel, Futuristic. I mean, there's several videos on the video games channel in the video and in the description of the video of him promoting his YouTube channel to go subscribe to it. Okay. So, okay. But that, that's all for Mr. DeVos, could you let him finish his answer, please? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, I was pretty much done. Yeah. There's, there's just tons of videos. I mean, on the YouTube channel that we now own that Brian used to work on promoting his futuristic hub animation channel. So that, but that to me is not outside of the three categories I've mentioned because one of those categories was that he said he was the animator. Well, so, yeah, the reason I said that is you asked me if the reason I said that is you asked me if there's any other ways that I know that he's at. I mean, he was working with Marco on the video games YouTube channel. It's common knowledge that that was his YouTube channel. He was creating animations for it and he was promoting the Futuristic Hub channel and launching it through the video games channel which was his animation channel. So, wait a minute, you, you said he was doing animations on what channel? Futuristic Hub. No, but you, you, you mentioned another video games channel. Is that what it is? That was the original channel this whole lawsuit started around. And there were some, well, I, I, of, some of his uh, animation videos on the video game channel. And uh, how did you conclude that those animations on the video game channel were created by him? Uh, I mean, him and Marco were working on the YouTube channel together. And I mean, but, I dealt with Marco, like for the video game channel. And then when Brian tried to kick us out of the company, me and my partner, Brandon, uh, I mean, he they were running the channel and Brian Martin was creating videos promoting in the beginning and in the beginning of the videos promoting the futuristic hub channel as his and openly on Twitter. There's, there was tons of videos of him talking about his animation channel and futuristic hub. So, um, but you said, I misunderstood that you said that he was creating animations animated videos for video games channel uh is that correct i don't think they're in i mean i'm not i'm sure he may have done some that were just for the video games channel but i'm i'm pretty sure that some of the videos that went up on the video games channel he had also posted on the futuristic hub channel well that's uh but just the fact that he posted them on the uh, uh, on both channels does not uh, give you another reason for concluding that he was the animator. Well, when you upload a YouTube video, you're 
I mean, it's literally part of up, like it's, if you upload a YouTube video, you're claiming that you own the rights to the video. And by doing, by uploading something you don't own the rights to, you could be legally like in trouble for that because you're uploading somebody else's copyrighted work. Well, don't, isn't that the function that managers can perform? What do you, sorry. Well, you, if, 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 uh, your manager, you've given somebody who's doing things on your channel uh, and his agreement with whoever owns the videos is I'm going to post it on that channel. Doesn't that happen? Uh, That's a, manage, a manager posting a video that he doesn't own. Doesn't that happen a lot? You would have to have an agreement to do that. And the agreement would be the management agreement, correct? Not necessarily, no. No, not necessarily. But that happens, doesn't it? Back to the form. I mean, people upload other people's videos, but that's why YouTube has their copyright system. Like if I go upload a music video that's not mine, that's why YouTube has their copyright tools because people are going to upload stuff that they don't own. Well, don't, can you not hire a manager and tell him you've got some video, uh, some videos and say, you put them wherever you think they're going to make money. You could do that. Yes. Yeah, Definitely you could. licensing agreements. So, um, and in fact, it wouldn't have to be terribly formal, would it? You could tell somebody orally to do it, and you would do it, right? Uh, I, you know, I, def, I wouldn't without a license agreement, especially okay. on my YouTube channels, because even, for instance, like my dad has a YouTube channel. He's done deals with putting his videos on other websites, and then even though they like made a verbal agreement, then those meet because those websites it's called rumble they also have a youtube channel and they went and claimed his videos even though they had a formal agreement saying that yeah you can post it on there and then they immediately went and claimed his video on youtube even though they didn't own the rights to it well then he challenged them right oh uh, yes okay well that's not the case because he didn't have an agreement that said they could post them has he ever made an agreement with anybody where he said, you can post my videos on I, other? I have personally, like okay. licensing videos, but that's signing a contract with, signing a contract with like specific terms saying that like they don't own the rights to the video. They're just, they have a license to use it. But that's been for like TV shows, really. That's not for posting it online. I haven't done that personally. Um, <clears throat> let's, um, let me, uh, <sighs> I'm going to uh, share the screen here. Do you recognize that document? Uh, not from just the first page. Well, do you want to go through it? I mean, where would you like to go? Wait a minute. My thing says out of memory. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I just um, scroll down a little bit. I can't because the video is over here. I can't see how many pages there are. It uh, it has uh, sixty nine pages. Okay. Um, uh, um, well, apparently the the memory situation has corrected itself. Uh, 
Isn't this the petition on which this lawsuit is based? Uh, no, just scrolling through it quickly, I can't. I mean, I recognize a lot of the stuff from the lawsuit, but. But, but you don't know whether this is the petition in this lawsuit. It's, I mean, it's definitely about the lawsuit. Okay. And it's oh, a cool. petition for fraudulent transfer at the top. So yeah, I would assume that's what this is. Well, um, it says original petition for fraudulent transfer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you understand that that's what this lawsuit is about? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm going to. That and many other things, but. <laughs> well, it, it, it just says fraudulent transfer, doesn't it? Whoop. And um, well, let's, let's, let's go in here a little bit and look at some of the particulars in this lawsuit. And I'm going to take you down to uh, page seven. Can you read that? Uh, Do just, you want to read the whole page? No, I just, I just, want to know whether you can make out the words. Oh, yes. Yes, I can read it. Okay. Um, you see um, that Holly Martin, that's Holly Bowen. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you understand who Holly Bowen is? Yes. Brian Martin's current wife. Yes. Um, okay. And here it's called, sometimes in your pleadings, you refer to it as Holly Martin. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you understand that that's Holly Bone is the name she she operates under in animating? Uh, not animating, I guess, but that's what I've known her as. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this says Holly Martin falsely stated in the email that she was the owner of the Futuristic Hub channel, okay? And let me show you the exhibit to which that <clears throat> exhibit D is it's it's away here. It'll take me a minute to get there because I have that page number marked. Um, okay, there we go. Exhibit B, which is page thirty-two in this. Um, and if we go back, we've seen that your pleadings is believed to be Holly falsely stated in an email she's the owner of the futuristic hub youtube channel referring to exhibit b uh, have you ever seen this exhibit b before i've definitely seen this email before yes okay and you see it has an exchange between Holly Bone and uh, Dan Wide. And who is Dan Wide? Uh, that's my lawyer. Okay. Um, how do you know how the plaintiffs came to the conclusion that Ms. Bone's statement in her email are false. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would have to run through the whole case to explain everything, but uh, 
for example, when Brian was creating the channel, he was with his old wife, Chrissy. I mean, she's testified that she was there when he created the channel and was making the videos. Um, like I mentioned before, he was promoting the Futuristic Hub channel on the video game channel. Uh, he's posted videos online talking in inter interview style about creating the Futuristic Hub videos and the adult content that it started out as. Um, it, it, yeah, it's, there's a number of reasons why it, Brian is the animator of Futuristic Hub videos. I mean, there just another thing that I could add. Like, I remember even public like beef, like two people being like the guy's name's Keemstar. He runs like a uh, like a drama YouTube channel talks about stuff going on in the YouTube community as far as drama and him and Brian have always had a really bad beef against each other and he made an, like animations making fun of that guy Keemstar that's I don't know his actual name but that's what he goes by on YouTube so it's yeah it's known that Brian is an animator and was very good at it I will give him that <laughs> Now, there's an element of your complaint regarding a house in Plano. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. And what is your claim there? Uh, we have a judgment against Brian Martin and... Brian and Chrissy, when he was with his old wife, had a Swiss bank account with, I think it was like, I don't know the exact number, but it was around like three to 400,000 in it. And I know Chrissy testified that she had no access to it, didn't even know about it for a while. And, or maybe not didn't know about it, but she, Brian wouldn't let her access it. And then after they divorced, that money got sent to Brian, I think, first, and then, or possibly just straight from Chrissy to uh, Brian's mother. And then his mother bought his brand new wife, or not bought, but sent her several hundred thousand dollars. And she, at like 20, 21 years old, bought a house in Texas with the money from the Swiss bank account that Brian was clearly trying to hide. <laughs> How do you know all those facts? Uh, I, I mean, I know it from looking up the, like just from lawyers doing subpoenas and showing where the money came from, like subpoenas to banks, like showing the transfers and testimony from Chrissy. Uh, I think that was in the first temporary injunction hearing. I mean, she explained that and just from being involved in the case, that's how I know and seeing documents showing that move, money was moved and yeah. You have, per you have no personal knowledge of that, do you? I'm sorry? You have no personal knowledge of that, do you? Yeah, from seeing, I do, from seeing documents like 
seeing bank statements of where money was moved, seeing the records of the house being purchased by Holly. Well, um, that's not personal knowledge. Personal knowledge is uh, that you were somehow involved in these transactions and know uh, what they are. So you don't have personal knowledge. Uh, I didn't know what they are, but I wasn't. Objection uh, to the statement by Mr. DeBose as a sidebar, it's not a question. Um, so um, the only knowledge you have about where that document, where that those funds came from is by looking at documents, isn't that correct? looking at subpoenaed bank statements and also from hearing testimony from Brian's ex-wife about a bank account that she didn't have access to the money and she didn't even want to deal with it. Like she, I'm sure she knew there was money in it. Like she said, I think it was around three to 400,000, but pretty sure she didn't want any involvement in it because he was pretty much, I don't know if you would call it money laundering, but he's hiding money away in a Swiss bank account. And then his wife that he just divorced has, is sending that money to his mom so she can give that money to her to buy a house. And there's records of her buying the house and them living there. Um, I'm uh, now. Um, what are, are there any records that are kept anywhere in the YouTube system that indicate who uh, creates? documents creates documents what do you what do you mean no i mean who creates videos that are posted the generally the person who uploaded it because by uploading a video you're agreeing to youtube's term saying you own the content so um is uh, are there any records that show who the person was that uploaded the video and the record of the video itself being on YouTube and you're uploading it to your channel, that's... But, but are there records that show who uploaded it that you know of? Section of form. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, it's not like a document, I wouldn't say, but it's, it says when you go on the video, it says who uploaded it what YouTube channel it's on. Where do you see that? On the YouTube video page. Like right below the video. Tells you the date and time, or I don't know if it says time. It has a date, but it doesn't indicate who uploaded it, does it? Yeah, it's, if, you, if it's on your YouTube channel, it would be uh, uploaded by that creator. Like I couldn't just go to somebody's YouTube channel and upload a video on it. Do you understand that there is a difference between owning a YouTube channel and having copyrights to something that is posted on that channel? Uh, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Well, um, what governs the ownership of a YouTube channel? <clears throat> the creator. I'm talking, are you familiar with 
YouTube's terms and conditions. Yes. And doesn't that govern who owns a channel? Yeah, if you if you create the channel, you're the owner of it. Of course, you could have you could make a deal and work with other people and sign contracts and stuff about it, but and so, Google okay. buys, you're the owner of it when you create it. And 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 typically, um, the person who owns a smallish channel is going to uh, be posting things that they've created. That's, isn't that correct? Yeah, for a smaller channel, for sure. But with, with bigger channels, that may not be true at all. Isn't that right? I mean, there's, there's people with millions of subscribers, and it's literally just them sitting in front of their computer, just like I am, creating mm -hmm. everything. Okay, well, um, but you do understand that the well, do you understand that the ownership of a product that's posted is governed by copyright law? Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And copyright law and YouTube's terms and conditions are different. Isn't that Objection right? to form. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the that YouTube's terms is about like, what you can and can't do on your YouTube channel, but uploading a video is you're pretty much stating that you own the copyrights to that video by uploading it. And, and, and if somebody objects to it, they can have it taken down, right? Yes. And, uh, okay. But you, you can also file a response and fight it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Um, um, I think, uh, just to add to that, I just thought, I mean, like, just because you go and file a copyright claim on a video doesn't mean that you own it to because like somebody could go and file i mean that's happened several times to me where somebody goes and files a copyright claim on one of my videos even though they didn't own anything in the video so you can unless if i if, unless i go on my youtube channel and try to fight it then they're going to hold the copyrights in youtube's eyes at least to that video so just because you file a copyright claim doesn't mean you own the video. You're saying you are legally, but it happens all the time of YouTube channels getting videos claimed that shouldn't be. <clears throat> now you saw that uh, you were watching at the hearing on uh, we had on Tuesday, correct? Yes. And do you remember seeing the the video where Mr. Um, Martin was quite agitated, was yelling, claiming to be the, 
the, the animator uh, feature. Uh, like, uh, are you referring? Are you referring to the video that what Brian wasn't in the? Oh, you're, you're you're talking about the one that Brandon played. I wouldn't say he was agitated in that. That was a compilation of multiple videos that he was on on other people's YouTube channels, kind of doing an interview with them. And I would definitely not say he was agitated. He seemed rather in good spirits talking about his successful animation YouTube channel and bragging about it. <laughs> well, hold on just a second here. Um, I've got this one here. Okay, and hold a second. if this comes up right what's going on Sapaz? my favorite little that? suppository you you want to know why i want to right. do minecraft porn Can you and hear minecraft that? sex yeah. a long time ago well this is why i did it and a lot of people are calling me a minecraft porn animator or minecraft sex director or something and it's getting a little weird okay so if you guys are watching this kind of dumb it down a little bit i know it's a meme and all but the reason why i did it was because well number one i love minecraft okay and number two i love animating so when i saw minecraft animations i'm thinking to myself Holy crap, you know, I want to animate something that no one would dare animate. And believe me, Minecraft isn't just for kids, it's also for adults. And because I'm the most offensive Minecraft animator on YouTube, I thought that that was just the perfect thing to do. So that's why I did it. I have no shame in it, you know, because seriously, it's age restricted. Not a lot of people are going to watch it anyway. Then again, it's got like millions of views. So naughty people like their porn. And that's about it. So thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, don't forget Minecraft Born. So um, can you think of any reason why he would post a video like that? Yeah, he was talking about his futuristic up channel. He was literally making Minecraft pornography videos and uploading it to YouTube. And um, this was so he was bragging about having posted pornography. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, even just right there, he was, but he was also doing it online. He was proud of doing those videos. Now you can't do those kind of videos on YouTube. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be monetized or anything. But that's how the futuristic hub channel started. Was he was posting Minecraft porn? pretty much it was just i'm not going to explain the details of what was in the videos but it was minecraft characters from the game doing sexual acts in the videos and when were those videos posted uh, i don't know the exact time frame but that was when the channel was created probably around sometime in 2012. Okay. Now, about the time that, and by the way, that, that video that I just showed you of Mr. Martin was posted, I believe, in 2016, which is four years after the video. Um, Well, can you think of any reason why he would come four years after the fact to talk about this? Section of form. 
Uh, I mean, he was talking about it before that too. That was, I mean, I don't think the time has anything to do with him talking about it or the time he did it. That was just him talking about it. Well, um, wasn't there a, a time when there was a lot of criticism going on about the, uh, the uh, futuristic hub channel? Uh, I mean, yeah, because, because of Brian's nature in the YouTube community. And I mean, he's had, he's been on YouTube for a long time and has had several YouTube channels banned. So he's already like pretty hated in the, amongst the YouTube community. So yeah, he was definitely getting criticism. Okay. And, uh, I mean, even on the video, sorry, even on the video games channel, when people found out that Brian Futuristic Hub was involved with that because of the lawsuit getting out in the YouTube community and all that, people were, I mean, there's tons of comments of people being like, oh, I didn't know Futuristic Hub was involved with this channel. Yeah, let me, um, let me show you. Uh... This. I know, no, they're they're insane. The views and are this insane. Is, this one has 27 million. This, this was this the is first a portion Minecraft porn on YouTube. There's a lot of things that are being updated in Minecraft. You Listen to his voice. That is a grown ass man who can save this what? video. What? There's a lot of things that are being updated. So. Why does he even say anything? That is so weird. He should have kept his voice out of oh it. Oh my god. He should have hired somebody with a kid's voice. Ew. Yeah. No, I don't know. That's worse. Basically, this video shouldn't exist. That's the it bottom line. It should not exist. How, how, like, one person finds himself making this video all of a sudden? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't... Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go back on because... I didn't I, catch the first part of it when you were talking. I didn't hear what you said. Okay. I am... Uh, I, I cut it off too soon. I forgot there was a blank portion in the center of it. I'm going to run that again. Um, I know, no, they're they're insane. The views are insane. This one has 27 million. This was the first Minecraft porn on YouTube. There's a lot of things that are being updated in Minecraft. Listen to his voice. That is a grown ass man who can save this what? video. There's a lot of things that are being updated. So why does he even say anything? That is so weird. He should have kept his voice out of oh it. Oh my god. He should have hired somebody with a kid's voice. Ew. Yeah. No, I don't know. That's worse. Basically, <laughs> this video shouldn't exist. That's the it bottom line. Should not exist. <laughs> How, how like one person finds himself making this video all of a sudden? This is beyond autistic. <laughs> this is one of those things where someone walks in and you switch to porn because it's easier to explain. <laughs> how could he sex with a creeper if it's a mob? I mean, the guy's got a point. Futur futuristic hub, we're looking at you for an answer <laughs> on this one. So, um, and that's, that's part of a much longer uh, video. Um, yeah, I know those YouTubers. They, they're reacting to Brian's video. Um, but again, that was, that, that video of which I showed you portion was, uh, made in 2016 represent that to you um and the video that they were reacting to or that video was made in 2016 that that was made in 2016 okay. um and i'm going to provide you guys with a link to it okay. um and here's I get a, a, another Another link. Okay. And uh, 
I don't understand how this stuff gets so popular. Like the bondage related video alone, the touch my body challenge video alone has 20 million views. Someone please explain to me how it got that popular. It doesn't even have good animation. It's horrible. The animation is horrible. I feel honestly sorry for the innocent child who thought he or she was watching a simple Minecraft video, but it takes a complete 180 on us. Let me just bring one more up. <clears throat> and you did see that little corner down there where it's pretty clear that they were talking about futuristic cop, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and one more. Uh. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. I can't complain. So the main character from Dragon Nutsack Z comes in, and at this point I start to realize that this whole thing just seems like an eight-year-old's imagination when they're playing with their action figures. You know, you got all these characters you look up to and masturbate to, just like hanging around talking with each other and fighting with each other and all this shit. So this content should be for children, but at the same time, this guy posts Minecraft titties. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Either it's for kids or it's some weird adult fetish thing because that's not what this is this seems like something a kid would watch but the minecraft titties definitely a fetish so were you aware that in 2016 there were a lot of attacks being made on futuristic hub uh, no, I didn't know there was a lot going on there. Well, uh, uh, I'll provide your attorney with a, a, a few more links. So these are just shorter pieces. I, I do know, like, of the ones, like I mentioned before, Keemstar. Uh, I know they, him and Brian, had a lot of drama back and forth online. I was, like, the main drama around the YouTube channel that I was aware of. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Okay, see this up here, Aegis? Are you familiar with that institution? Uh, no, not off, not from seeing it right this second, no. Okay, well, let's... Uh... It sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. I might be thinking of something else. Okay, all right, okay. I'm not sure why this is not connected. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is Aegis. And this is, remember we were at the hearing that uh, 
Mr. Keating was talking about records that are stored for um, the videos that are filed that will show who it came from. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. So um, he was talking about content ID. And, and okay, but let's let's just go here. This is this is this is for Holly Bone. See up there in the corner. Uh, no, no, I can't see that because the uh, videos are blocking it. But yeah, yeah, now I see it. Okay. So um, I'm going to go down this area called video management, and you will see Holly Bone, huge numbers of videos. Down here in the lower right hand corner, you see there are 81 pages yeah. of, of videos. See that down there? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to move to um, page. And, and, and you know, like they, we, uh, you know okay. this is, you have made a, a document request and uh, printouts from this website are going to be going to be produced. Um, uh, so it's so it's very, very difficult to um, to make records of these in a PDF form, but we're going to be doing that. Um, so let's go here back up to 67. And 67 is jingle balls. And so I'm going to Click on that. You see that? Not that. And you see that's reject. It was up there for years. It wasn't rejected. That's rejected because now there is a lawsuit. Going. So let's go now to this. See, it says Holly Bone down here. You see that? Correct. I see it, but I know just from looking through that list of videos, just because she's claiming she owns the rights to them. No, no, no. This. This is what she did when she listed these things. That's what this does. Okay. And objection to the statement as a sidebar. I okay. see that I see the date is 2021. So that was not when she No, that's, heard, that's that was not when those videos were uploaded. No, that's that's the date of the rejection. But let, but let's just take a look. Here it is. Futuristic hub and a cute little thing. And it was posted December 4th, 2012. On the Futuristic Hub channel, yes. On the Futuristic Hub by Holly Bone. Absolutely. That's not. in the form. Well, no, just um, because that what I, I I didn't I had to have I knew I'd ha heard of that website because I recognize the name, like I said, and I just from you showing me for a few seconds. I know what this website's doing. It's it's a content ID system basically outside of YouTube that manages your videos, files copyright claims against them. But just because that says Holly's name right there, nobody has access to the Futuristic Hub channel right now. And if somebody files a copyright claim on it, nobody has access in it to go and fight it. This well, literally was done, this it says is it right there. July or July 24th, 2020, you can go and claim a video that was posted nine years ago and say it's your own. And if somebody doesn't fight it, which well, in that instance of Futuristic Hub, they can't fight it. Well, you, and, you, will, you will never find on any of these Brian's name. Yeah, they're done in 2019 after you got kicked out of the Futuristic Hub channel. No, no this, these, these are just the dates of the, rege of the rejection. It says, well, anyway, to, 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 the copyright to, claims were created in 2019 in November. Well, all on the same um, day, and that was that was before any of this stuff. Um, no, that was when Brian was started a, trying to the form in the statement. Okay, that was after Brian started to try to claim after years of claiming Futuristic Hub to be his. That was when he started to claim that Holly was the owner of it. And before he had claimed that Christy was the owner of it, his ex-wife. Of course, it's in her name because she's he's trying to say it was her YouTube channels this whole time. And there's nobody to go on the YouTube channel and fight it because Google has everybody locked out of the Futuristic Hub channel. 
like just like I said before, I think I think I did. Somebody could go. I mean, she could literally go right on there, download one of my YouTube videos from YouTube, go on that Aegis website, claim my copyright or claim a video on my YouTube channel, and say it's hers. And if I don't log in my YouTube channel for the next three years, she owns all the rights to that video in YouTube's eyes. She's claiming the ads on it, but that doesn't. Like I was saying before, you can file a false copyright claim. It's, been, it's happened to me tons of times. And if I don't go and fight it or shut it down, then YouTube, YouTube stance is pretty much, we're giving you copyright tools, but whatever you decide to do with those copyright tools between you and the creator of the content, we're not legally involved. We're leave, if you file a, fa a false copyright claim, you're going to be liable for it and you agree to that. Well, let's take a break here. How long do you want? Oh, uh, let's say uh, 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, I need to use the restroom. Okay, going, sounds good. We're going off the record at 11.02 a.m., concluding file one in the deposition of David Tyler Moss. We are back on the record at 11.14 a.m., beginning File two in the deposition of David Tyler Moss. Pass the witness. We'll reserve our questions for the time of trial. Okay, no. Okay, I guess we're finished. We're done. Going off the record at 11.15 a.m., concluding file two and the deposition of David Tyler Moss for today. <laughs>